That is why you have been unable to pass through the wilderness of life that every Christian and every servant of God must pass in their life. Now go out of the way of God to seek power in the witchcraft kingdom, in the marine kingdom, to seek powers at Ogboni kingdom. Welcome back. This is End Time Evangelist. God bless you. Today, I want us to discuss a topic I titled The Role of Integrity in Building Trust and Credibility. You know, even as Christians, there are topics we need to talk about. You know, there are characters, there are behaviors that we need to consider as believers. Because as Christians, we are the first Bible that the unbelievers are going to read. Before you come to preach to a person, they will look at you, look at your appearance, look at the way you talk, look at the way you look, look at the way you address people. All these characters need to be addressed as Christians. You don't just go to church, you claim you are a Christian, you are a believer, but there are moral values that you are not applying, you are not living by. No, being a Christian does not just end on you reading the Bible, preaching the Bible, singing in the choir, or becoming any position, any taking any position in the church as a Christian. No, it goes beyond that. It goes beyond that because the campaign we are making is of heaven. We are campaigning for heaven and conversing for people to come to Christ, to know Christ, to accept Christ into their life, and then we teach them the life of Christ. And as such, we need to live exemplary life. We need to exhibit the life attitude, the life examples of Christ Jesus, and show them that this is the way they need to follow. I pray that this message will change your life. Holy Spirit of the living God, I welcome you and I ask you to fill me, Lord, and speak through me. There are many, Lord, that are watching right now. Their life will never remain the same after watching this video in Jesus' name. What I'm trying to say is that as Christians, we need to live a life of integrity. A life of integrity. It is very, very important. So, what is integrity? Integrity involves keeping promises, taking responsibility for one's actions, being honest in all transactions, treating others with respect, and following rules. Integrity is a trait highly valued in a personal, in a professional, and social context, in the sense that it fosters trust, reliability, and a sense of moral character. The character of a Christian as a believer in Christ Jesus matters a lot. Your character, your behavior, your attitude can either win souls for Christ or chase them away. Because some people will see you because of the way you live. They live around you, you know them, they know you, you, the way you talk, the way you respond to people. They know you as someone who doesn't have respect. They know you as someone who tells lies. They know you as someone who steals. They know you as someone who is always not, not nice, not good, the way you talk, the way you dress. And you go to church every minute, every day. You carry the Bible, you preach. No, you cannot win souls like that because your life, is the first Bible they are going to read. Your life is the first thing they want to study, not the Bible you are carrying. Your life is number one. That's why life of integrity is very important as a Christian. And in this video, I'm going to give you some points, some number of things you need to do to live a life of integrity and if you have some of these things I'm going to mention, you have them in your life it will help you as a Christian 
to be able to live a pure life. And number one, I'm going to mention some perfect pointer examples of integrity of life that every Christian should imbibe. One is keeping promises. Keeping promises. A person who keeps promises is showing that he or she stands by her morals and ethics. If they fail to keep a promise, they would indicate they don't have the trustworthy, the honest, committed, and dependable attributes that are needed in a friend. When you make a promise to people, you keep it. When you keep a, keep a covenant with someone, you redeem it. You fulfill it. Don't tell somebody you will do something you know you are not going to do. It is going to terminate your integrity. It is going to tarnish your integrity. Integrity is a very powerful word. When they say that someone, is in, someone has integrity, you should understand what it means. Be a man of your word. When you say something, do it. When you make a promise, keep it. That is one of the ways you can keep a good Christian value and live a life of integrity. Keep your promise to people. Keep your promise to your brothers. Keep your promise to your sisters. Keep your promise to your, your fellow brethren. As long as you have made such promises, it is going to help you. And people will know you as a man of your word. That is integrity. Two, keeping secrets. This is an ideal way to demonstrate your integrity to people who confide in you. By demonstrating that you can keep a secret, people will develop greater trust in you and believe that you have moral strength or moral fiber. Someone who keeps secrets very well can be trusted with his or her company data. If you are someone that when they entrust you with something, they say, please, I don't want anybody to know about this. I don't want this information to be leaked. And the person that has spoken to you knows that he or she has not told anybody else about that. They are trusting you to keep it secret. They are trusting you to bury it in your tummy. They are trusting you to hide and secure such information. So many things, so many people have lost their friends, lost, lost their good friends, very, very good friends, because they couldn't keep secret. So if you are such a person, that whether you are a Christian or non-Christian, to have the life of integrity is very, very important. When somebody entrusts you with something, I say, please, I don't want this to be known. If you want to maintain a life of integrity, you should not reveal it no matter what. Under no circumstances should you leave a secret of a person's life that they have trusted to you. If you do that, you have tarnished your integrity. You have tarnished your image. You have tarnished your name. And such people can never trust you. Even God himself does not like people that when he tells them something, you see, see, I give you this message. I don't want you to share it. This message is meant for you. Because God knows that some secrets he tells you is your personal message. He knows that some people, when they hear it, it can either make them stumble or make them backslide or make them fall back because their faith cannot carry such message. The same thing applies to God. When someone entrusts you with secret, do not reveal it. If you do, they can never trust you again. Integrity of life is very, very important as Christians. Three, not telling someone else not letting someone else take the blame. When you know you have done something wrong, when you know that this, they are asking for who did something and you were the one that did it, you damaged something or you caused a problem and now the problem you caused has caused a bigger problem. And they are asking, please, who did this? You knew you were the one and you tried to hide because nobody saw you when you did it. You did it alone when no one was there. And then you felt you can you, you felt you could escape since nobody saw you because you knew the consequences of what you did was hard, was high or was large and you tried to hide it. No, do not let another person take the blame of what you have done. That is integrity. That is what integrity. When you have done wrong, admit 
even when nobody has caught you and they are asking please who, who took this money you know you were the one that took the money admit you were the one that took the money who ate who ate this food i kept here you knew you were the one that ate the food admit you were the one do not allow another person to suffer for the sins you have committed you know this happens mostly when people are much and there's one of the one of the crowd or one of the people they commit sin and then they say who committed this Maybe who spoiled this chair? Who broke this table? You know you were the one because nobody saw you. You refused to own up to what you have done. Then you have no integrity. The life of integrity, even God cherishes this, cherishes it so much. God cherishes so much. Live integrity life so that God will be happy with you. Do not allow another person to take the blame of what you have done. To suffer the consequences of what you should be the one to suffer because you were the one that did it. That is integrity. Four, no gossiping. No gossiping. Gossipers are people who share knowledge about people that might be embarrassing to the person being talked about. If you gossip, people will see you as someone who doesn't act with integrity. If you are a gossiping person, whether you are a Christian, or unbeliever, you don't have integrity. You know that gossiping someone is talking at the back of that person. And when people are talking about people, although there are there are true gossipers, true gossipers are when you gossip about people and what you gossip about them is true. That is true gossipers. But it is not even good at all to talk about anybody. If you cannot talk about somebody before them, if what you are telling that person, you cannot confront that person and tell the person in his or her face, you have no reason to talk about your brothers or your sisters at their backs. It is not good. It means you do not have integrity. So if you are a gossiping person, whether you are a Christian or non-Christian, whether you are a believer or an, an, a hidden, you do not have integrity. Integrity of life is very, very important. And I'm talking to children of God. I'm talking to people who want to make heaven. Stop gossiping your brothers and sisters because that kind of life indicates that you are, you, you are not living a life of integrity. Five, doing the right thing and not expecting reward. Doing the right thing and not expecting reward. That is integrity. That is integrity. So many people today, even in the house of God, they do eye service. When the man of God is around, they, they try, excuse me. Excuse me. When the man of God is around, they try to walk, they move around so that people will see them walking. Hey, this person is walking very hard. But when the man of God leaves, their hands up, they are not doing anything again. They, they, they only walk when the man of God is around. So the man of God will see that they are walking. Even at your working place, don't do eye service. It's lack of integrity. When you do something for people or when you are working for people, whether they are, they are there or not, do not work because you want people to compliment you. You want the owner of the company to come and compliment you and say you are doing well. No. A great proactive way to show your integrity to others is to do the right thing even when you don't expect a reward. Do the right thing. There are so many ways you can do the right thing. Let's assume you went to buy something to a, uh, at a supermarket and then you, after buying, you paid money and they gave you change and they overgave you change. And after going out, you, you discover that after counting the money, the change they gave you was over. Return the change. Take your own money. Return the balance. That is integrity. Without expecting any reward. Or maybe you are on, a, on, you are on your way home and then a brother that is, you are going with, probably the person doesn't have their transport fee, or you decide on your own to pay for the person's transport fee. After paying for the person's transport fee, don't expect the person to say thank you. Don't expect the person to say to reward you. Or maybe another day when you are in a situation where, that you need such a help, don't expect that person to pay for you because you pay for her or him the other day. That is not integrity. When you do something for people, do not expect reward. When you are working, whether in your company, whether you are working with your parents, whether you are working with your friends, whether you are working with your brother, whether you are serving in the house of God, do not expect reward. That is integrity. And 
another way you can maintain an, a life of integrity, which is number six, is being polite even when people are rude to you. Being polite even when people are rude to you. Remember, you are a citizen of heaven. You are running the race to go to heaven. There are things you need to do. There are lives you need to live. And there are lives you must not live. Because you are a candidate of heaven. Don't quantify yourself with the people of the world. You should allow your life to be like that of Christ. And that is why I am making this kind of teachings on this channel. Six, be polite to people even when they are rude to you. A person who keeps their calm and is polite to rude people does that out of integrity. They are being polite because they hold themselves to high standards and a high moral character. They know who they are. They know that they are, they are, they are Christians. They are priests. They, are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they know that they belong in heaven. They, they, they don't need to be rude to people because their life is already examples to others. Their life is already a Bible that they want people to read. Do you know that your character can transform and change a person? Your character alone can convert an unbeliever. Because of your character, an unbeliever can repent. The way you live your life can make your, your, your neighbors around you to come to Christ even before you preach to them. The way you live your life, they will say, Sister, please, which church are you going? Can I follow you to the church today? I like the way you live your life. Be the first Bible they read. People are rude to you. It is very, very hurting. It is very, very not fair when people are talking to you rudely and anyhow. Just keep your calm. Don't be angry. Don't get offended. Be polite to them even when they are so rude to you. That is integrity. It is a life of integrity. And such life pleases God. Another way you can maintain a life of integrity. Don't forget I told you, your character matters a lot as a Christian. Your behavior as a Christian matters a lot. Seven, telling the truth. Telling the truth is very, very important. You know, as Christians, many of us, we have lied in the past in so many ways. Telling lies will not maintain integrity of character in you. Telling the truth is going to help you to maintain integrity of life as a believer, as a person. So always tell the truth even when it is difficult, when it is hard, when it is not convenient, even when you are going to face punishment, tell the truth all the time. That is the life of integrity. Eight, admitting, your, admitting that you made mistakes. Wherever you made a mistake, admit. Even when you make a mistake but you, did, but you don't realize it and someone comes around and points out the mistake you have made, admit without argument. That is the life of integrity. Nine, not cheating people you work with or people that work with you. You are working with people, don't cheat them. Don't cheat people. Be equal. Be equal. What I mean be equal is that if you are working with people and they are paying them salary, quantify the work they have done with the money you are going to pay them. Don't pay them less amount compared to the work they have done because you know you can do it. No, be equal. Be fair to people. Don't cheat people. There are many ways you can cheat people. There are many ways you can cheat people. You can cheat someone. Maybe they gave you money to share equally, 10, 10,000 and then you people have, you people have four and they say, give you, they say share 10, 10,000 and they give you 20,000. You know that you're supposed to share 30,000 or 33,000. You could get 30,000. And then you now hide the 10K and give them, and give them 10, 10K. You have cheated them because they were not there when they gave you the money. And the person that gave you the money did not tell the people that are working with you how much he has given you. Be fair to the people you are working with. Don't cheat people. That is the life of integrity. When people work for you, pay them. Settle them very well. That is integrity. 10. Giving credit where credit is required or where credit is due. Giving credit to whom credit is due. When people have done well and they deserve praise, praise them. It is the life of integrity. 11. Apologizing for your mistakes. When you make a mistake, apologize. Don't wait for people to come and say, why did you do this to me? Don't wait for people to harbor you in their heart for what mistakes you have done and you know 
that you have made such a mistake. Seek them, apologize, and make things right. That is the life of integrity. So, which is the last but not the least, standing up for what is right, no matter how tough. Standing up for what is right, no matter how tough. That is the life of integrity. A person with integrity will always stand up for justice. Even when people around them are pushing them to break the law or rules, to do things wrong ways, they stand their ground with the knowledge that the right and honorable thing must be done. This is very, very perfect. Living a life of integrity is a very, very good thing as a Christian, as a person, because even God himself wants us to live a life of integrity. I believe that this short video has transformed your life. If you know you have not been living honest life, life of honesty, life of purity, life of integrity, life of truth, from today after watching this video, I urge you to change your life. I urge you to begin to live a good life so that God and people around you can be able to, be, to trust you and God will be pleased with you in the name of Jesus. Life of integrity is very, very important. Let others see Jesus in you. Let others see Christ in you. Let others see the character, the attributes, the attitude of Christ in your life as a Christian. Rather than allowing them to always complain about you, no, let them emulate your own lifestyle. Then they say, I want to live a life of integrity and a life of truth as this person. His life is pleasing to me. This is a good report and even heaven will rejoice over you. I pray that this video transform your life. Please, before you go, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. After subscribing to this channel, put on the bell icon so you can always receive my videos whenever I post. Because I post videos every week. Again, like this video, share this video, and comment after watching. As you do these four things, the Lord will bless you. Thank you for watching and thank you for being patient. God bless you. See you again soon.